Welcome along to Emirates Old Trafford. It's a rainy August Monday morning out of the window. The covers are on. There'll be no play today. But I have got a, a very special guest uh, alongside me in the studio. It's a former captain of uh, the Red Rose County, Dane Villas. Dane, how are you? Nice to see you. I believe you've got some uh, news for us. Yeah, firstly, thank you, Walt. It's always uh, good to see you and chat to you. Um, I'm very well. Things are going nicely in the, in the one-day competition at the moment. Um, boys are in good, good spirits. And yeah, I got a bit of news that uh, um, decided to call time on my career here at Emirates Old Trafford in Lancashire and step away from, from county cricket um, at the end of the season. Well, that's uh, come as a bit of a surprise, I think. Uh, uh, it'll shock some of the players and some of the supporters as well. Um, and in my immediate thoughts are thanks for all you've done because you've had a great six, seven years uh, here in, in Manchester playing for Lancashire. Why, why now? Why, why have you chosen to, to finish your county career now? I just think it's, it's time for, for me to, to step away, um, just for myself and my family, have some more time at home. Uh, I've got a young family um, who need me at home a bit more and to be there. Um, and I also think it's the right time for the team as well. You know, I've, I've given my all as much as I can and I'll continue to give it towards the end of the season. But I think the team is in a really good space at the moment. And we've got a, um, an exciting group of young players coming through as well. And guys who are pushing for spots as well. So I think it's, it's, it's a good time and you know, I'm happy to leave it where it is at the moment. I'm, so is this, is this the, the end of your, your, your cricket? You're going to walk away is it as of today or the end of the season? And, and what, are you, what are you going to do? No, I'm still going to continue playing in the, in the one-day competition. Uh, and hopefully if selected in the, in the last four county championship games uh, and end off well there. Um, and then in January next year, play the SA20, which I'm still going to continue and play. So it's just for county cricket for now. Um, and that's it at this stage. Uh, well, we'll obviously be very sad to see you go leave uh, Emirates Old Trafford in Lancashire. Uh, but you say you're going to play T20 in South Africa. Uh, is that just for, for the next six months? Or will you take stock and see how you go? Maybe you might go and try and play franchise T20 around the world. I'll take stock and see if, if the opportunity presents itself. Um, and we'll just see when the, when the time comes mm -hmm. uh, after the SA20. OK. Um, well... Forgive me, but I'm going to go back mm -hmm. through um, a few years because you signed for Lancashire in 2017. Um, when, how did that come about? When, and you signed as a coal pack, so you'd given up on your South African international career. So how did, uh, how did you come to, to sign for, for Lancashire? Well, firstly, I mean, a dream of mine was always to come and play county cricket. I think the people who I had um, grown up with through coaches, through guys like Jimmy Cook, um, and just watching all, all the old Transvaal players, all, all the real good players came over to England to play uh, county cricket. And then even when I made, started making my way in through first class stuff um, in South Africa and professional cricket, um, all of my sort of the senior players and heroes who I was trying to be like were all coming over in the winter and playing county cricket, guys like Neil McKenzie, Mm. Um, you know, Alvira Peterson uh, and uh, Ashwell Prince were big players mm. here at Lancashire and, you know, they were playing and they were doing well and that's exactly the sort of path that I wanted to take. If I wasn't playing international cricket or if I wasn't, um, had anything, other plans in the winter, for to try and come and hone my skills in England and I thought that was the next best thing, which, uh, which for me was the ultimate. Okay, so the obvious question now is after seven years here, has it met your expectations and are you pleased you did it? Oh, and um, it did, and more so. You know, I had, exceeded I had, them then. It has exceeded them as well. I've had an unbelievable time here. You know, um, Pippa and I, uh, my wife, we often joke about, you know, we came over here for a year or two, I think, I signed a, a two-year deal, and I would have bit your hand off for a, a, an extension for one year, and we were desperate. I think after um, a couple of games, you know, I spoke to my agent, and we were looking in July, really, to try and sign an extension. We were ecstatic when, when the club, and you offered me, uh, an extension on, on, the, on the contract we had and to look back and say I've had seven years here at Lancashire um, at a great club has, has been amazing. Mm. Well you've proved to be a, an inspirational player in your own right both as a, a, a wicket keeper and as a batsman uh, and also in the field um, but did you have any aspirations to, to when you first came to become captain? 
No, I, honestly, I, I didn't feel that it was ever an option, um, only because of the history and, and everything that goes on here. And I know there have been some amazing captains in the past, um, and we had some great players in the team um, who were doing that. So it was never on my radar to be a captain. Obviously, I always w would have loved to, to have done it and was trying to do it, but it was never something I thought, thought would happen. Well, we've had some fantastic overseas players at Lancashire over the years, not least yourself, but Clive Lloyd was captain, of course. <coughs> um, and so too Wazim Akram for a while. So that's a, a fine tradition that you've maintained there. Um, when, you, when you were made captain in 2018, it was a pretty obvious choice um, because uh, you were inspirational in the dressing room. Is that something that you always... Uh, in, intended to be? Was it how you played the game, how you lived your life? You were well or, organised, well structured uh, and the performances obviously followed. Was that, was that something that, that sort of hit home to you? Yeah, I think, I think I'd, I learned a lot growing up from, from some of the captains I had throughout that and trying to watch them and immerse myself in, in how they go about things um, and trying to learn from them as much. And who I, were the, the think, major influences then? You know, guys like Neil McKenzie mm. um, when I played down at Gauteng um, and at the Lions with him. And then when I moved to, to the Cape with Justin Kemp, um, those two were really, really good captains who sort of owned the room and controlled it in, in separate, in separate uh, ways. But I learned quite a lot from, from both of them. And then I also think the nature of my position in the field, being a wiki keeper, mm. you almost assume a captaincy role in the field by helping the bowlers, helping the captain. Um, and obviously often the two captains I had, they stood at first and second slip. So talking to them and chatting to them and, and trying to learn as much as I can was sort of my job. And I tried to take that on as much as possible. And I think that has uh, stayed me in good stead the whole way through my career. Well, you, you, your captaincy and your role at Lancashire proved to be a, a superhuman effort in, in effect. That's what we thought watching on anyway, because you were captain, you were wicketkeeper, you were the mainstay of the batting. Did it ever feel like it was getting too much or did you just uh, really enjoy the fact that you were you were leading from the front as it were no i i, I loved it i loved the, the the pressure of trying to do that and trying to help and contribute in any way in the team um i just wanted to put in some great performances for for the the boys in the in the team on and off the field so i think that helped me a, a huge amount there were times when it um towards the end of the season where i was looking forward to a break after mm. a bit of a stressful time um and i've always said you know playing at a, a club like this, there's never an easy game. Every game when you play at the top of the log, you know, you've got to win that because we want to be pushing for harness. And if you're playing the team that's at the bottom of the log, you know you have to win that game as well because you know you've got people who are sort of breathing down your neck. So mm. every game yeah was um was was high pressure and at times when you hate it, but also I felt like for for me and my personality and, and my game, I almost needed that as well. So I got a lot out of it um doing that uh, and taking that role. Your batting performances were uh, have become legendary even over a short period. I mean, you, 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 there was no question that you uh, cemented your place as a batsman. Did that help when it came to taking over as captain? Definitely. You know, you obviously, when you come over here as a as an overseas player or any sort of new player in a, in a change room, you really want to lead by performances because obviously, what goes um, in the past when you come into a new team counts for nothing. So you really need to sort of step up to the plate and prove your worth. And I think I got off to a good start, um, mm. got 100 early, sort of ticked that one off the box, and then you know, managed to score a few runs, which sort of made me feel more at ease and, and welcome in the change room. Not that I never felt welcome in the change room, I always did, but for myself, it was needed to just to kick start and, and get a performance, which, uh, which, helped, it, which helped things in the way. Mm. Did, uh, did you feel um, that leadership came naturally to you? It um, certainly appeared that way from, from off the field anyway. I think so. I think, I've, I've, like I said, I learned a lot growing up um, and just trying to, trying to sort of help in, in any sort of capacity. You know, um, it's quite nice. So I think um, it's nice that it came off that way and I'm very happy that it did. But uh, yeah, I, I just love speaking to people and helping people and trying to encourage and, and try to put us in positions that could, that could hopefully win, win games. Because obviously, as you know, Winning cricket, winning games of cricket is a lot more fun than uh, than anything else. Yeah, it's very difficult um, when you you come into a changing room. You've got uh, over 20, 20 individuals in that dressing room at, 
at, uh, at Lancashire. Um, and did you, did you have a, a set philosophy about how you would approach leadership? Was it down to uh, do, as, do as I say, lead by example? What was it? Yeah, I think my sort of style was I never asked anyone um, to do something that I wouldn't be prepared to do myself, you know, um, and I would never put anyone else in a situation like I wouldn't do. So I would always try and um, if I were to ask someone to do something, you know, I would think what, how would I approach it or what would I need to do to be in that position. And that was sort of my uh, style. And, and I think what I tried to do as well is try to take pressure off uh, people and try to make them feel uh, a little bit more comfortable to do their job because I know I would like that if, um, if someone was in, in that same position for me. And um, after your time, or uh, your initial period of time, going around the counties, playing at different grounds, did you ever sit back and think, I'm glad I came to Emmett's Old Trafford? I do that all the time. You know, I think it's one of the, the, the best places to play. Obviously, when, when you come from, from overseas, you, you look at iconic grounds as well. And this is certainly an iconic ground, a test match ground, which has had some amazing games here. Um, there's been, as you mentioned, there's been some incredible players. Um, and Manchester has always sort of been on, on my radar, um, you know, just from some of the stuff back home. The, it's a great sporting um, city. It's a great city. There's lots of culture here, which, we, which I enjoy and I love, and I've had an amazing time. And just to see how much the, the stadium has grown, the team has grown and everything like that has, just, has been a real treat to be part of. You know? mm. um, well, we certainly, certainly feel the same. I, I, what about um, your, worth e worth, your work ethic is something that uh, has stood out over the, over the years. Um, is that, does that come naturally to you? And do you think that the way you have performed and played and gone about your daily life, has that rubbed off on some of the characters in the dressing room? Yeah, I would hope so. Um, I'd like to sort of say that, you know, that that just sort of um, has helped and people have sort of taken note of that. But, you know, from my side, I just, I, I always found that coming into a, a good team, you know, when I was playing back in South Africa, there was only one way, one way for me to get in to be seen was to, to work harder than anyone else, um, to try and sort of find my way because, as you know, sometimes no matter how many runs you score or how many wickets you take, you know, there's always going to be someone in the team uh, ahead of you. But I thought, like, if I could, you know, show that if I could bug the coaches or show them that I was working hard or trying to improve my game all the time, that they would eventually give me a chance. So that's always been my way. And I've always tried to, you know, have this, you know, you're going to have this time and there's going to be a time when you retire like today. But I thought, try to give yourself as much opportunity as possible and try to perform at the, your best level. And there should be no excuses. And and have no sort of regrets and anything left unturned. What about, um, what about some of the finer points and the finer uh, details of your time at, at Old Trafford? What's the, what are the best memories that you've got? Um, I think for me, it's obviously, you know, just some of the players that, that, I've, that I've met here. Some of the guys I've, I've had some partnerships with, some of the moments we've had on the field, not just um, the, the, the taking wickets or scoring runs, but just you know, being in moments of, of, in tough situations, you know, batting with, with some of my friends out there and having those, those partnerships, I think, batting, you know, being able to, to bat with guys like Crofty and have a relationship with him um, on and off the field, you know, Bales and I, when I talk to him in, uh, mid on, mid off, we have some great conversations um, and, and some, some great conversations, but also some conversations about how we're actually going to get a wicket as well. But mm -hmm. uh, we have some great stuff, you know, so just some of those memories um, of being part of that, um, that team and that, that sort of that team bond has, has been incredible. I like the way you, you've approached or answered that question I, because there are so many individual performances that you could have mentioned or personal performances that you scored the highest total for Lancashire in, in List A competition when he made that 166 at Knotts, I think mm. it was, and very nearly chased down 417 or whatever. Yep. Um, and, you know, double hundreds that innings that you played at Colwyn Bay will forever stand out in my mind. That was unbelievable. Those individual performances will still be, will still be there and you'll still look upon those with, fa with favourably, surely. Yeah, obviously, I mean, those are, are, are great. Um, and I, lo I love scoring those runs. You know, the, the one that gets me is the, one, is the list day one. You know, um, mm. 166 was, was, a, was a fantastic innings and I don't think I've, almost better, better other than maybe Colwyn Bay, but 
um, the nice thing about that was to have my parents there watching who, who come over every now and again and to have them there sitting in the crowd watching that um, that innings was, was good for me because I always feel huge nerves when, when they come over because I don't want them to come and waste their time and watch me get a duck or something like that, you know. So to score some runs and do that was incredible. Um, the only thing that really irritates me about that was, was, in, a, was in a losing cause, mm. unfortunately. Mm. Um, but again, you know, even, even that game, that, that was incredible because batted with Crofty, Crofty got 100, um, batted with Boshi towards the end, and we nearly got us over the line. Um, so I just think like even just seeing how we go by with those type of guys and having those, those sort of moments in the middle has been my favorite bit uh, of cricket. You're only 38 now, which is no age at all. Um, but would you say that over the last seven years you've, you've possibly played your best cricket? Yeah, absolutely. I think th the amazing thing about county cricket and, and my time here at Lanx is there's always been an opportunity to grow. And I feel like there's never a ceiling here. They always just want you to do well and keep on improving. And they give you every single opportunity that you, that you can. And I think when you've got that freedom to express yourself and go out and play, um, it, it gives you a real sort of uh, relaxed sort of feeling. Obviously, there's pressure and stuff to, to mm. go out and perform because you want to perform at a big club. But that's sort of been the, the best bit for me. It's, it's, it's been really incredible. And I think my game has improved a huge amount playing in um, vastly different conditions to what I was used to and playing at some, um, some different grounds all over the country. Well, what's your overall impression then after the time you've spent here of, uh, the English county game is it in good health? I think so. I think it's it's brilliant. I mean, you've got some players who are changing the game. You know, you just look at what's going on um, with the Test side now at the moment. You know, they started that in, with one day cricket four or five years ago, um, and that's sort of leading. You can only do that if you've got the foundation of, of the county cricket and you've got the the players coming through to do it. And playing against some of these players has been amazing. I really love the fact that. A lot of the internationals come back and play as much as they can. You know, to have a guy like Jimmy coming back and playing as many games as he does for us still shocks me to this day, which is, which is uh, fantastic. You know, and, he, and to see his hunger and the way that um, all the sort of internationals come back and play and make county cricket strong and, and tough uh, as any cricket is out there. That's great to hear because the county game does get maligned to a degree uh, and put down. And uh, somebody who's uh, come from South Africa, played test cricket over there, uh, to, to look at the game in this country in that way is very refreshing. Would you recommend it to uh, all, all and sundry to come and try your hand playing in various competitions over here? Absolutely. I think it's, it's, it's an incredible experience, you know. A, to sort of test your, your skills in, in different conditions with a different ball. Um, and I encourage sort of every sort of player I can to, to come and challenge himself and play. If it's not county cricket, it's at least club cricket. It's, you know, just getting out of your comfort zone and playing. Um, and I think, you know, as, as overseas players or guys coming from, from abroad, we, we've got a duty to make sure that we do as well as we can. We, we're good people and, you know, that clubs like Lancashire actually uh, go out and look for, for players uh, to come over and help in the change room. And then it can only make um, the world game stronger as well. Well, Dane, um, thanks very much for your uh, efforts and performances over the years for Lancashire. I think I can say on behalf of everybody that's associated with Emirates, Old Trafford and Lancashire, all the players, all the staff, uh, everybody that works at the ground and the supporters as well, that uh, every day that you've come to the ground, you've put in 100% and that has been absolutely brilliant. Well done. Perfect. Well, thank you very much. And thank you for, for everything you've done for me. I know um, your time as Director of Cricket, you helped me a, a lot along the way. And thank you to everybody who uh, has shown me some support um, and kept me going throughout these last seven years. So it's been a, I've had a great time. Yeah, we've certainly had a good time. Dane Villas, thank you very much.